What is up, guys? Welcome to another Behind the Curve Reacts. As always, if you enjoy the kind of content I'm putting out, feel free to like, comment, subscribe down below, share with your friends, all that good stuff. But today we are going back to shipwrecked comedy. Uh, so my expectations could not be higher. Because, like, the last thing I watched of theirs was the Edgar Allan Poe's murder mystery dinner invite only gala potluck for friends. Um, and it was absolutely incredible. And this, from the screenshot that I saw, kind of, it, it seems like it's going to be another whodunit, like Poe was. Uh, this is going to be the case of the Gilded Lily, I believe. And yeah, it looks like a noir kind of thing. Like, there was the guy who played Edgar Allan Poe, I think I saw in the thumbnail. He looked like an old black and white private investigator type thing. So I'm hoping that it's, yeah, another mystery, another great, like, everybody's a suspect kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, it's all just in one part. I think it's like half hour, 45 minutes long or something like that. So I'm not going to bother to break it up. So we're just going to do it all in one big long chunk. Hopefully you guys like it. So yeah, go ahead and get yourself some snacks and all that good stuff. And let's go ahead and get into it. Again, the production value is so high. That's right, the sign did originally say Hollywood Land, not Hollywood. Yeah, Joey Richter. Hollywood, 1939. A wise man once said, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. Not sure what's ending aside from my drink, but it sure seems <laughs> like something's about to begin. <laughs> oh my God. America's sweetheart, Wilhelmina Vanderjetsky. Biggest <laughs> name in Hollywood, literally and figuratively. Yes, Her face is in every movie house in the country and apparently my office. Listen up, Phillips. We got a case for you. The name's Weinshine, Fig Weinshine, junior ace reporter at the Tinseltown Times. This year's world famous movie star and my best friend since we were tykes. Wilhelmina Vanderjetsky, charmed. <laughs> Willie's in a jam so bad they ought to spread her over biscuits. A pickle so sour, she'll be served on a Reuben at Cantor's. A tiramisu <laughs> so spongy. All right, all right, slow down. God. Wait a minute. Where were you going with that last one? I'm not sure. I'm used to being interrupted sooner. Why don't you use your resources at the Times? We gotta be discreet. You sitting down, Phillips? Willie, let him have it. I'm being blackmailed. <laughs> let him have more of it, all of it even. <laughs> My name isn't actually Wilhelmina Vanderjetsky. It's Lily Thomas. Sorry, Lily Thomas? No, Thomas. <laughs> all right, look. Lots of actresses use stage names. What's the big deal? A couple of years ago, I found myself working as a cigarette girl at a party thrown for Roger Hare Creme, the movie producer. He thought I was a guest and he took a shine to me. Sounds like a Roger Hare Creme film. But before I knew it, it was too late to tell him the truth, that I'm not really the heir to the Vanderjetsky fortune in fake Landia. Just a simple farm girl from Minnesota who sometimes slips into her regional accent and sunburns easily. Oh my God. Anyways, <laughs> we got hitched and he jump-started my career but someone knows my secret and they're threatening to tell. It's 
a real house of cards. Someone's about to knock it down like a cheap cliche. We want this sorted out before <laughs> Willie's film, Suffering Safari, premieres on Friday. What do you say? First off, I work alone. Always have, always will. Second, take a hike. I don't touch Hollywood cases. Not since... a war. Why, that's preposterous. You must turn down 20 cases a month. You can't afford to do that. Sure I can. <laughs> supposed to do that. <laughs> oh, well, I have money. Lots of it. I suppose that's why I'm getting blackmailed. Come on, Phil. Surely you can betray your principles for some scotch and a new doorknob. New doorknob? Yeah, this fell off when we came in. <laughs> it's okay. I understand. Hollywood can be a hard and lonely industry. Fine, I'll do it. Just this once. Great. I'd like to start with a little operation I like to call the Bitsy Big Little Boondog. Absolutely not. You dames keep your noses clean while I'm on the case. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. When did this all start? Last week. The letter demands $20,000 every Wednesday or my secret will be revealed. Wednesday? So you're already out 20 large. You gotta make a second drop tonight? And I found this outside my dressing room this morning. Dead Lily. On account of her name I got being it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> God, Anybody I love their chemistry. I have a grudge against you? Well, I know about my identity. And Fig. And you know. And my co-star, Cliff Galloway. As for a grudge, I did just beat Vivian Nightingale out for the lead in a Prohibition-era tap-dancing Western adaptation of The Grapes of Wrath. And Miss Nightingale just started singing at Bixby's Lounge. I know, Bixby. Well, <laughs> First, I'm gonna get on the horn with my inn at the station. See if they got anything cooking. Who you got in the fuzz? A friend from the war. Were you in a youth infantry? Then I'll pay a visit to Mr. Calloway and swing by Bixby's to check out this Nightingale dame. Meet me back here at noon tomorrow. Go for Knickerbocker. Just the LAPD dispatcher I was hoping to talk to. Well, Ford Phillips, and the sun hasn't even gone down yet. Careful, you may accidentally experience the joy and wonder of daytime in the city. Huh, thought that was a hangover. Listen, you got anything on a Lily Thomas? Hmm, let's see. Nothing on a Lily Thomas, but we do have a file on a Lily Thomas. <laughs> I'm sorry, T-H-O. I don't know what to tell you, that's just how you say it. <laughs> she disappeared about two years ago. Body never found. Spooky. What's the wire on Cliff Calloway? Cliff Calloway? Oh, my stars. The only thing that he is guilty of is being too handsome. Lock him up and throw me the key. I've got a set of handcuffs with his name on them, and I'm going to put them on him. And put them on. Oh, my God. Let me fly away because he can turn into a sexy dragon. <laughs> anyway, I'm surprised you're taking on this kind of a case. After everything you've been through in the war. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe it pulls on my heartstrings. Calloway, lay it on me. Told us not we to do wait for a man to do everything. We'll be waiting till I come up with a better ending for this quip. <laughs> I want to see if we can make this nightingale sing. Welcome, dazzling dames, to Bigsby's Lounge. I'm Bigsby Crane, and tonight we have a musical lineup that would make Apollo himself green with envy. You might be wondering if that's a metaphor. Yes, I'm Bigsby. A Manhattan. <laughs> I like my drinks like I like my cities. Dirty, full of flavor, and named after cities. My friend Shirley <laughs> Temple came up with a yummy mix of grenadine and soda. I forget what she calls it. You look like a couple of mademoiselles on a mission. Someone you're looking for. Me, perhaps. They call her the Belle of Bixby's. The heartbreaker of Hollywood. 
the femme fatale of Fresno, which is where she's originally from. Miss Vivian Nightingale. Looks like our bird has landed. Oh, she's not a bird. She is a person. I'm craving adventure. If you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. Maybe I need a change of scene. <laughs> My man is a boy. A little <laughs> too. Wilhelmina and Cliff Callaway are shooting a movie here at MGM. That was really Mom good. Roger here for me. Cliff was a big name before Wilhelmina came along. Men want to be him, and women want their men to be him. He may resent being in her shadow. Why are you smoking? You are so flammable. <sighs> Film sets, temples of artifice, lousy with pretense. I love the Dutch. Could buy an angles. honest sentiment and a newspaper here for ten grand and a coupon for a free newspaper. <laughs> Tough place to start an investigation. Everyone's got their guard up. I'm gonna bring her down. So I'm the star, and my name's gonna go first. Oh, I'll do whatever it takes. And no two bit talentless actress is gonna stop me. May I help you? Name's Ford Phillips, Private Eye. Looking into a case involving a co worker of yours. Know any. Two bit talentless actresses. <laughs> oh, that? Just a play I'm rehearsing. It's called The Actors Who Hate Each Other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, freaking sight. Sorry, Cliff. I bust the key. Huh? Look, I was working on a new comedy bit and I dropped my props, okay? And then, uh, just, uh, it's been a hard day. Hey, have you seen Roger lately? I just want to make sure I'm not sitting next to that twit chaplain at the premiere on Friday. I think he's stopping by later. Great! Good! Okay, okay then. You know, maybe he can also get me a dressing room. It isn't a freaking broom closet! <laughs> Why is this my life? Ugh. So, but Buster Keaton can talk. <laughs> A lot. A great actor leading quite the double life, wouldn't you say? That's a fabulous way to put it. A double life, just like me. Wait a minute. 
You didn't. I did. You're good. I am. <sighs> Fine. Ugh. What do you want to know? Wilhelmina <laughs> Vanderjuski doesn't exist. Lily Thomas told you herself. I believe it's Thomas. I can't get on board with that. I think it's Spanish. You and Lily both bonded over your secret God. lives, knowing the truth could destroy you. Letting her know that she wasn't the only one hiding a secret kept her at ease. But it also... Make up in five, Chris. <laughs> you got it, Dolly. Say, Dolly, you leave that no-good husband of yours yet? Cliff, no. But I only do it for you. <laughs> but it also let me feel less alone in this world. I promise, I am not blackmailing her. How'd you know about the blackmail? Why, she told me, of course. She tells me everything. Well, she tells everyone everything. Honestly, I may have miscalculated in trusting her with my greatest secret. She tell Buster? Tell me what? <laughs> Walls as thin as paper. They're not that thin. Maybe because this is a frickin' broom closet. It's garbage. He's garbage. Really, he's just so garbage. Okay. <laughs> I heard that. I was, I, it was a line from a play. I was rehearsing a play. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you? Autograph? Sing happy birthday? I don't do photos and you can't have my shoes. Big wine shine, <laughs> Tinseltown Times. Here to ask you a few questions about a Wilhelmina Vanderjetsky. Take a seat. I prefer leaning passive aggressively in doorways. When did you first meet? <laughs> Had a callback for a film. Prohibition era tap dancing western adaptation of The Grapes of Wrath? Ugh, that was the seventh role I've lost to her. The first was three years ago when she was a bright eyed, bushy tailed nobody fresh off a bus from Nowheresville. That was before Roger Hercome turned her into an overnight success. Got any dirt on her? The Times can offer a sturdy sum of scratch if you've got any slime to sling. Love affairs, secret children, perhaps financial distress? Financial distress. Perhaps. Do tell. <laughs> it's all hush-hush, but these days, if there are large sums of cash involved, there's usually one culprit. Who is he? It's not a person. It's a place. Well, where is it? It's not a place. It's a... No, it, it is. It isn't. <laughs> Lady, you're on my last nerve. It's a top-secret underground gambling ring run by the mob involving some of Hollywood's biggest players. All I know is they meet on Wednesday nights. Tonight. And next Wednesday. And the Wednesday after that. So someone might need some money. And I said, applesauce. If you blackmail me about my fake name, then I am just going <laughs> to... Put it on Vivian's be... tab, Crane. If the press gets wind Willie's here, there'll be a paparazzi casing the joint faster than you can say. Got any cookies behind that bar? So are you actually asking if I have cookies? <laughs> Because of course I do. Bigsby's got everything. Huh? I'm Bigsby. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> like I told Lily herself, Mr. Phillips, fame is fleeting. <laughs> I'm in this for the long haul, whether my name is before hers or after it. Or not near it at all. Knock, knock. How's my favorite movie star I'm not married to? <laughs> Roger. <laughs> this is my friend Ford Phillips. He's a private dick. Uh-oh. Is someone bringing a paternity case against you, you scallywag? This guy, he's a ladies' man. I love ladies. <laughs> yes. Roger Hercule, <laughs> pleasure. Likewise. Oh, please, call me Roger. And call me an underappreciated genius who's out of apple martini. Buster, there's my man. And oh. here's my dressing room. You can only see it with the world's most powerful microscope. Meanwhile, you got your wife a fucking sweet. Oh, Buster, you cracked me up. <laughs> you think I'm being funny? <laughs> when I'm being funny, you'll know I'm being funny because it'll be hailed as one of the most iconic and monumental performances <laughs> in the history of cinema. All right, all right. I'm going to go deal with this girl, all right? <laughs> you boys be good. <laughs> Buster! Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, Roger has had to run interference with Buster more and more lately. Don't plan any big trips anytime soon, Mr. Calloway. Interesting. 
Bixby? The usual. Two fingers of scotch and limited eye contact. <laughs> and how's about we squeeze that bar rag into a glass for my friend who tailed me all the way here? Got the drop on you, Ford. <laughs> you're all the way from the studio. Yeah, I know. Subtle get up. Dash gunfire. Rival private eye. If they handed out awards for being terrible at your job, you wouldn't get one. Because you get lost on the way to the ceremony. You'd be held at his house and called the Dash Gunfire Memorial Awards, hosted by his mother. Hey! You talking about me in your head again? Of course not. <laughs> I think he bought it. And what'll it be, Count Dashula? Yeah, I'll just have what he's having. But better. <laughs> Say, where's the bathroom in this joint? Got a lead to follow up with a uh, Vivian Nightingale. Heard she's been crooning here. Damn. That girl's got more info than a Maytag manual. These two dames were in here a while ago for her. One of them was Wilhelmina Vanderjeski, the movie star. It's true, in person her skin does glow. And guess what? She's being blackmailed. Damn, Ford, you're good. She's my client. Told that news hawk to stay at it. <laughs> well, Vivian dusted for the night. Here out of toilet paper. From before I went in there. <laughs> Say, what do you think of my latest disguise? Very suave. Were they uh, filming a vampire movie on the lot? Hmm. Regency love story. Trick is, you don't want to blend <laughs> in too much. <laughs> Missing the top hat, though. Lost out on a job. They're probably going to charge me for it. <laughs> never do what you do. Me neither, Kimo Sabi. Oh, and these bad boys. <laughs> Very authentic. And some of us take this job seriously. God, that's so Hang gross. Around. And if you spot me in Helsing, tell them I went. That away, huh? <laughs> so now I gotta figure out who Dash is working for. He's probably wondering the same thing. I could feel this going sideways. <laughs> so I decided to pay Claudette a visit down at the station to see if she could write the ship. So, what happened was, the other day I opened this letter that I got, and it's very sweet, I get lots of fan mail. But then I read it, and I realized that I was being blackmailed. Can you believe it? So, we hired a private investigator, and he is just Wilhelmina. the best. Oh, there he is now. <laughs> oh Gotta run. God. What are you doing here? I told you two to steer clear of this. The only thing I know how to steer clear of is an oncoming train, and I don't mean the metaphorical kind. We paid a visit to Vivian Nightingale, got ourselves a real nice scoop, and I don't mean the kind they serve in... <laughs> you gotta stop flapping your gums about blackmail. The whole point is not letting people know. Well, I'm sorry I've never been blackmailed before. Who's being blackmailed? I am. I'm looking to acquire some guns or explosives. Can we talk in private before this one tells the whole station of shoe size? Six and a half. You think it could be Keaton? Roger loaned him to MGM with me and Cliff for this film. He's a treat. Well, he had these. What'd you find out about Vivian? She's a mezzo-soprano. Her range tops out at two Fs above a middle C, although she I mean about clearly... the case. Right. <laughs> she told us about a top-secret Hollywood gambling ring. Oh, we've been trying to infiltrate that gambling ring for months. No idea where they meet. Vivian only knew they meet tonight, and then next week, and the week after that. Basically, it's a weekly thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, we've managed to ID a few members. Bill Hammermeister? Blackstrap Molasses. Buster Keaton. These names are amazing. <laughs> While Wilhelmina made the second money drop, Fig and I followed Buster after work. And just according, and just to, according pl to plan, he led us straight to the cookie jar. You talk too slow. <laughs> Dash, we can see you. Got the drop on you again, Ford. I don't think you know what that phrase means. Who's a stowaway? Dash gunfire. Private eye. Public nuisance. <laughs> Talking about me in your head? I'm trying! <laughs> How do you do that? There's a blackjack table over there that needs pillaging, Captain. Wait, hey, I know you guys are on Buster. I got more dirt on him than a mud wrestler covered in dry mud. I.e. dirt. Wow. I'll trade you. Info for info. Who are you working for? Dish, Dash. Okay, I don't need the, the whole third degree, all right? I got a lot on my plate. Tons of cases back at the office. I'm handing one off tomorrow night, I got something. I'm very busy. <laughs> Do you know what you're looking for? All right, I got a case file right here, and I'm willing to sell it to you for my leverage. <laughs> it's a ledger of bets from this gambling operation. 
Code names used to protect their identities. Useless. Just pick this up off a table? Looks like another case for the great Ford Phillips. It's Phillips, T-H. I don't know what to tell you, that's how you say it. <laughs> oh, careful! I almost pulled a comedy stunt on you. <laughs> hey, you're that private dick from the studio earlier. And I'm Dash Gunfire. Hey, do you remember my name, please, friend? <laughs> These are the lilies you left outside Wilhelmina Vanderjetsky's door. Why would I give her flowers? They're dead. Like you wish she was. I don't wish she was dead. I just want her gone by any means possible. <laughs> so these flowers aren't yours? Oh, they're definitely mine. Where are the handcuffs? I'm working on some new comedy bits. One of them involves flowers. Let me show you. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still workshopping it. So you didn't leave these outside her door? I guess I must have dropped them. And you're not aware of any, say, blackmail attempts on Wilhelmina? <laughs> Blackmail? Oh, that'd be good. I have been a legend in this town for years. And she marries one guy with some pocket change and suddenly she's the queen of Hollywood? Oh, if only they knew the truth. And hey, maybe somebody does. But not you, huh? Nah, not me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a hilarious game of solitaire to play. I don't know if I trust him. But it could Buster be a red herring. Add up, so I asked Claudette to check my map the next day. Nothing else in the Buster file. Hey, how's your friend holding up? Friend? I don't have friends. Your client, the fast talker. Oh, Fig. Good, I think. Why? Well, she was fired from the Times about a week ago. It was in the papers. Which is weird now that I think about it. This was the kind of information only a voiceover could help digest. <laughs> a voiceover that would lead to the next scene. <laughs> oh my god. What we got is a big old pile of nothing. I'm ashamed to call myself a reporter. They'd feed me my hat at the times. A curious slip up. Almost as curious as Dash's whereabouts. All right, now if you're gonna go over the facts, do it for the whole class to hear. <laughs> Why was Dash following me? Let's see. You said that he followed you from the studio to Bixby's? Which means he was already at the studio. So who else was at the studio and the gambling den? Buster Buster Keaton. Island. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. It's all taking me back to the war. You can't possibly have been old enough to be in the war. The war was a film I made with Claude in 1923. <laughs> the Tiny Terrors had a three-picture deal at MGM. We were set to be the biggest child stars of the decade. You're like what I am. What's that? Always being told what to do, where to go? Your friends selling your secrets, your whole life bandied about in a back room like a used dresser at a flea market? <laughs> no thanks. So I quit. Is this a black eye? Talk about terrible working conditions. They ran out of makeup on this picture. Had to use an ink that wouldn't come off for a week. Jesus. They didn't care about us. As long as we made them money. Look at your tiny little top hat. <laughs> it's just like the one on the man who took the blackmail money last week. Is that important? Oh my god. Spill, oh, well. Will. I was told to drop the briefcase in a dumpster in Echo Park. I was just about to leave when I saw a man in a top hat dive in and grab the briefcase. He was real angry on account of losing his hat in there. Dumpster diving? Lost top hat? I know one man who fits that profile. All right. I have a top secret plan for this sort of thing. If there's one thing I've learned in this town, it's that secrets usually don't stay secret for very long. Fired from the Times? Well, I can't think of a reason why she'd lie. Unless... She plans to cash in on her pal's secret. Wouldn't put it past anyone in a sorry excuse for a city. I like it here. <laughs> Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's even got little ducks on it. <laughs> My god. <laughs> I 
I really hope that it was Joey. Like, for some reason, I hope he's the bad guy. <clears throat> the more I think about it, though, the more I'm pretty sure it's not Buster Keaton. It just, it's fitting too perfectly. Jesus. Oh, listen, this chin wagon's been top notch, but I gotta make some ankle music. Catch you at the premiere tomorrow? You got it. I received some <laughs> competition in the voiceover department. We awaited the last of our suspects. I got a note from an usher to come to the lobby. What gives? What gives? Well, my heart, for one thing. The dame had legs that didn't stop till they did. The kind of glow you could only get in the Fresno sun. Curls that cascaded about her shoulders like hills made of hair. They're extensions. Everyone brought here tonight has some connection to Wilhelmina. That includes you, Dash. Never know when I'm going to pop up. <laughs> yes, I do every single time. What's this? I'm a duck. Ducks don't have ears. Oh, yeah? Then how do you think they hear things? Jesus. Is this going to take very long? My husband is probably wondering where I am. Oh, well, somebody wants this over in a jiffy. Like most things involving my husband. You all had reason to blackmail oh. Miss Vanderjetsky, but there was only one way to find out who did it. We realized Dash was the courier for the blackmailer, but not smart enough to actually be the blackmailer. Dash normally doesn't know who he's working for, but in this case, it was on purpose. To cover tracks, Dash was hired in secret. Yesterday, I informed Bixby Crane that I suspected Fig of blackmailing her childhood pal. As always, I knew Dash would overhear. Dash followed me as I distracted him, leading him all the way back to Vivian's dressing room, where I gave her some phony dirt about Wilhelmina. So she's not allergic to cookies? Ugh, I baked so many for tonight. Of course I didn't squeal on my gal. Ford said, I know you were sacked from the paper. I said, I'm ashamed, humiliated. But if we crack this case, I'll be your partner in solving crime. And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> anyway, so this next part was a long shot, but Dash was stupid enough to say it out loud. I have a lot on my plate. Tons of cases back at the office. And a one-off tomorrow night, I have so many. So the case was still at Dash's office. With Fig distracting him, I called on a friend from <laughs> the war. The war. <laughs> we use an ink as makeup on that film, the kind that stains for a week. The kind now used by police. I thought I had frostbite. In all likelihood, the transfer was made today before the bank's closed for the weekend, so one of you will be sporting a muddied mitt. Two of you will be sporting a muddied mitt. <laughs> Can we hurry up? There's a 30 foot version of me in there giving the performance of a lifetime. Let's see them cookie holders. Oh my god, she was blackmailing herself. Don't make us cry now, funny man. <gasps> okay, but I didn't blackmail anyone. Then where'd you get the briefcase? All right, I did it. Damn it. I blackmailed you. <laughs> and why was Dash following you? Turner Classics, did you hire gunfire to fluster buster? Hire this? Oh, there may be some compromising pictures of me in a diaper at a fatty Arbuckle party, but <laughs> I have more dignity than that. <laughs> Bet you never thought you needed info for me, huh? You got that ledger of bets from the other night? 
Looks like old Dash finally got one over on the great Ford Phillips, eh? Final payouts for last week. What code name owed 40 grand? Lily. And I am never, ever going to tell you who it was. Sweetheart, it's nearly giraffe time. Oh, Ford Phillips is the guy. Big wine shine, former reporter for the Tinseltown Times. Oh, Roger Harris from that. Bless it, go out. <laughs> Cop, red handed. Ooh. I know it's hard to tell because of the black and white, but this ink is a deep <laughs> red. I don't know what you're talking about. I kept myself shaving my hand. <laughs> it's called handscaping. Handscaping. Who's the one person that Buster would take the fall for? The person trying to revive his career. He could ruin it again if he wanted. Someone was covering Roger's bets. Code name Funny Guy Haha69. <laughs> So Roger Hare from a powerful movie producer, owes money for the mob. Buster Keaton, down on his luck star, decides to cover his debts. In exchange for a career boost. Plus money owed. But I didn't know he was blackmailing his own wife. Roger, tell me it isn't true. It isn't true. Really? No, it is 100%. <laughs> I got deep in the red. All right, I needed to handle my debts. Why didn't you just ask your wife for the money? It's really a breath of fresh air in this tawdry town. I thought if she ever found out, she would leave me. I'd be heartbroken. Plus, our prenup actually favors the breadwinner, and I always figured that'd be old Roger. <laughs> you get nothing oh in a divorce, so you blackmailed your own wife? That's low, even for me. You should be ashamed, Herr Creme. I hope you look good in stripes, because you're going to die alone oh, in the Roger, pen. Oh, my God. You mean you don't? Is everyone confused now? <laughs> Just me? You went through all this trouble because you were scared I'd leave you? Oh, my God. The only God. person you ever had to be was Lily Thomas. Hold on. You knew the truth this whole time? <laughs> really, I adore you. But fake land here. Seriously. I'm sorry. I'm having affairs with four different men in five different states, and your thing is a stage name? Wait. <gasps> you double hired me. Once to tail Buster, and once in secret to find cash in dumpsters? I have to see if I can get anything to use on Buster, just in case. <laughs> and Sleeps hired me to get dirt on you? I wouldn't hire you to look at dirt. But Hackbitty was, she was real shady. Her skulking was so convincing. <laughs> I took an improv class once. <laughs> for you? Oh, God! This profession is so hard! How does anybody even do this? Ford doesn't even wear disguises! <laughs> or maybe I was wearing a disguise this whole time. So maybe it was time to take it off. <laughs> and I've got paint on them, and dirt, and trash smells, and I'm gonna get charged for it. And I'm all out of petty cash. My petty cash is just nickels, which are worth a lot right now. It's not too bad. But I'm gonna give you some dollars, so To a job well done. Not one gunshot fired, nor one man down. To finding out the blackmailer was just my kind, loving husband who'd never do anything to hurt me. Okay. To new beginnings. <laughs> and maybe a new office. <laughs> I'm Bixby. <laughs> <laughs> God, that was excellent. That was so good. So let me be the first to say that I really hope that there is more than one of these. Um, because this was absolutely hilarious. This was so good. And for so many different reasons, too. You can definitely tell they put so much time and effort into this. And it really shows. Um, but let's go ahead and get big. Oh my god, does these shipwreck comedy people know how to write a mystery? It's great. It's fantastic. I ah, it's really making me want to go on like a mystery kick. Like I used to really love mysteries. And then I just feel like I haven't seen one other than the Edgar Allan Poe one in such a long time. So shipwrecked, thank you so much for that. 
Uh, also, I didn't know they could write music. That's super cool. Like Mary Kate's song, beautiful. And then the uh, like the fourth wall breaks in the songs that were like in between the scenes. Oh my god, amazing. So funny, so dry to like just straight up just telling you what it is. It's fucking hilarious. It's so good. Um, I am so bad with names. I'm just going to refer to them as their characters from Edgar Allan Poe. Um, but Poe and Lenore, they had such amazing chemistry in Edgar Allan Poe. And in this one, it just took it to a whole nother level. Like, they were so funny together. The actress that plays Lenore or... Um, God, I can't remember her name in this. Uh, she is absolutely hilarious. She is my favorite member of Shipwrecked. Like, and I know Mary-Kate is incredibly talented, and I know the gentleman that played Poe is super funny. Emily Dickinson is funny, but there's just something about Lenore. Like, her comedic timing, it looks so effortless, but it's so damn funny. And, like, the metaphors, I, I, I think that's what you call them. Um, all of her, like, idioms from the 1930s, 1940s, those were so funny. And they were so fast. It was one after another, after another, after another. I, it was so good. It was so funny. It was such a great, like, noir parody. Like, it, it had everything. It had the black and white. It had the crazy voiceovers, the metaphors, the ridiculous Dutch angles where, like, the, the frame is like this. It, it's so good like the wardrobe the overall vibe the music it was so good like i don't know if you'd call it a parody i don't know if you'd call it an homage like whatever word you use for what we just watched it's perfect just absolutely perfect uh joey as i think his name was dash the uh like the the rival private investigator oh forget it like other than lenore Joey was so fucking funny. Like, the costumes and the fact that he was so, so bad at his job. Oh, man. Like, dopey Joey Richter is so much fun. Like, I, I love villain Joey. Don't get me wrong. Villain Joey is great. But, yeah, just not entirely, like, doesn't have a super good grasp on what's going on around him. Joey Richter is super funny. Uh, and then his breakdown at the end when he's putting everything together, like, well, you hired me twice, and you did this, and you made me do this. Like, that <laughs> was excellent. That was so good. And, like, Joey didn't even come in until, like, halfway through. I saw him in the credits, and I was starting to get scared. Like, is he actually going to be in this? And then he was, and it was amazing. <laughs> it was so good. Um... I didn't realize, though, like, I am really bad at guessing. Like, with this and with uh, Edgar Allan Poe, I just should stop. <laughs> I should stop trying to figure it out. I used to be really good at that, but apparently it has gone downhill, at least in terms of whodunits, because now I'm 0 for 2 uh, when it comes to Shipwrecked. Uh, but yeah, like, if anybody else has any, like, Shipwrecked videos that they that you guys absolutely love please link them down in the comments uh because i would love to check out more they yeah the production value is ungodly high they are so so funny and they can sing and write music as well as just being able to write comedy like i need to see more of theirs like i've seen quite a bit of tin can now i need to see more shipwrecked <laughs> um, but yeah, like, let me know what your favorite parts were down in the comments, guys. I always love reading that kind of stuff. This, this is begging for a rewatch already, and I can't wait to rewatch it and see everything that I missed. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching it with me, and I will see you all in a reaction very soon.